I ask my God to make me the best in my school and uh, make me a resistance fighter. In the 6th December, I came to life. When I get bigger, I began asking about my father because I saw all children has fathers and me not. I asked my mother about him. So she told me, your father is a martyr. Altruistic suicide is not a term one hears every day unless you happened to be involved in the conflict between Hezbollah and Israel in South Lebanon. And in Lebanon, altruistic suicide is known as martyrdom. Well, at some level, uh, in natural selection, people become aware, even at a very unconscious level, that their genes and the genes of their children, for example, are the same genes. So when you talk about survival and survival of the fittest and survival of the genes, you're talking about basically the survival of the genes and not of the individual. Then you can understand that if individuals associate uh, a larger community or a larger group or a larger cause with their family, their children, their very immediate gene pool, then you can also extend the idea of altruism into a wider group and therefore people would be ready to give up their lives for the well-being of those others who you identify with. <laughs> Mustafa is 10 years old. His father, a Hezbollah resistance fighter, died in a suicide bomb attack before he was born. When I grow up, I want to be a soldier or a doctor because the soldier defends his uh, ground and all his people. I know my father with the good things people they say uh, of him. He was uh, very strong and he wa was uh, Muslim. I want to be uh, become like him because uh, I will uh, go and see him uh, in pa paradise uh, if God wants. For the past 22 years, Hezbollah's David and Goliath struggle with Israel has challenged all superpower efforts to bring a lasting peace to the Middle East. Their name evokes images of bearded men shouting anti-Western slogans and scenes of embassies burning, of human bombs, hijackers and kidnappers. And yet, on the eve of the Israeli army's withdrawal from southern Lebanon, Questions were being raised as to how a small band of Lebanese resistance fighters had managed to take on Israel's high-tech army. 
The Jerusalem Day Parade commemorates the third holiest city in Islam. The Shia believe that when Jerusalem is liberated from the infidel, their Messiah, known as the Mahdi, will appear on the day before Armageddon. Today, the guest of honor is Abu Ammar, who is being acknowledged for his status in Shia society as the father of not one, but two martyrs. The word martyr in Arabic means one who will witness. He witnesses and he acts as an arbiter for people. Imagine that you have your son, a martyr. He was martyred on the path of God, against the enemy of God. He guarantees heaven for you. What do you seek and aspire to? Not to go to heaven? Thank God the Haji and me have two martyrs. That is, if we slip from the grasp of one martyr, another martyr catches us. We will go to heaven. Ammar is 20 years old. He never married. Now he is marrying the Hur of Ain. In heaven there are girls, the Huris, who are more beautiful than all the women of the earth. This martyr has guaranteed his life and his parents. That is, he intercedes with God on behalf of his family. The neighbors fight among themselves as to who lives closer to the house of the martyr. Hezbollah, or the Party of God, was created in response to several key events in Lebanese history. A violent civil war, the Israeli invasion of 1982, and the presence of a Western multinational peacekeeping force. They have been connected with a number of notorious incidents, including the 1983 attack on the US Marine barracks, in which more than 240 Marines died, and the kidnapping of foreign citizens, including journalist Terry Anderson and CIA chief William Buckley, as well as at least one bombing of the US Embassy in Beirut. Hezbollah's radicalization of the Shia community and its declared allegiance to Ayatollah Khomeini underlined the movement's spiritual deference and close ideological ties to Iran's pan-Islamic vision for the Middle East. The Iranian Revolution in 1978 and 1979 had a very dramatic effect, not because the Shia Muslims saw Iran as a model that they wanted to precisely emulate, but because it was an inspiration for action an exemplar for action. And what it basically demonstrated was that a mobilized, committed people with deep belief could in fact uh, enjoy a, uh, a very significant change in their life conditions and political system and so on. According to Professor Kharzeddin, the environment of the Shia in South Lebanon is fertile ground for altruistic suicidal behavior. They saw themselves living under extreme duress due to the Israeli occupation of the South, which resulted in the displacement, humiliation, killing and torturing of members of their community. Young people growing up under these conditions felt that their self-image could be perceived in a very negative light.